Cigar Aficionado has uh, some uh, prop bets and some predictions. It's their it's their NFL issue. And I was reading it, and I saw that Danny Sheridan, the uh, great odds maker, handicapper, had uh, some interesting takes there on how to gamble this upcoming season. And I've known Danny a long, long time. And uh, just the – and I, I encourage people, if it's entertainment purposes, I used to be a heavy better and got out of it, thank God. But uh, if you do bet – uh, Danny had some uh, ideas for you, uh, some things to do and don't. Also, who he thinks will be playing in this uh, year's Super Bowl in Minnesota. And Danny Sheridan joins us. Danny, good to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. Good to hear your voice again, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Okay, where do you want to start when it comes to how to bet on the NFL? The uh, tips that you gave in the magazine. Gave about six or seven of them, and I not to I'm not getting paid to sell the magazine, but I'd suggest buying it. It's on page 110. But I guess my biggest suggestion would be, if you wager on professional football, don't bet parlays, sucker bets. And we'd probably have to spend about the next 40 minutes uh, <laughs> discussing the rest of them. But if there's any particular one you want to discuss, I'll be glad to. But again, don't bet parlays. What about rematches? where you have one team beating one team early in the season and then the rematch. That's one of my favorites, Dan, when uh, let's say the Giants play Dallas and they lose to Dallas at home, always in the rematch, the team that beat the spread the first time go against that team in the rematch. It really worked out well last year. I think it was plus 22 games, which is very, very high. But And the reason for that is the complacency. You beat a team at home, your division rival, you're going to be complacent when you get them at your place. At least that's the way I handicap. What's a great bet this year? Bet against New England Patriots. They were 16-3 and three against the spread last year. They'll be overpriced starting with Kansas City, and I would wager against them, against the spread, not to lose the game. What about winning the World Series? Uh or winning the uh, winning the Super Bowl, I should say, and then we could get to some of the other sports. But uh, the Patriots, the overwhelming favorite. Where where can you make some money? Where's some smart money here? Well, first of all, I would never bet a future odds. I like the Patriots again, along with the herd. I picked them last year, and uh, picking the Super Bowl winner when there are twelve teams left in the playoffs is very difficult for me. Not to mention preseason, but I would not recommend future bets. I don't think there's any money to be made doing that. What's tougher, college or the pros to bet on? Pros, without a doubt. I really do well in the colleges and the pros. Some years are great, some years are average, and some years I don't win. But overall, the colleges to me are the... They're just beautiful. Love college football, as you do too, Dan. But what makes it easier to pick a college spread as opposed to the NFL? You have about 60 or 70 teams to choose from versus 16 teams to choose from. And the colleges, it's, uh, you know, the pros are like, uh, hey, we're winning by eight points or whatever. We just run the ball up the middle. Very boring. Colleges, they'll throw the ball. Steve Spurry was a great example of that. You just never, colleges are just, uh, I don't know. It's easier. I say the most important thing the fact that you can pick 60 or 70 games to choose from versus 16 boring NFL games. And by, I mean boring, I mean with the point spread, because the point spread is very accurate in the NFL. It's, I think I have a little edge. Others do also early in the college season because the odds makers haven't adjusted. Everybody seems to have a bad beat. It, it, I, I'm around guys all the time that tell me when they when they won their bets, but they never tell me when they lose. Do you have a bad beat story when it comes to the NFL or college football? Oh, God, I got so many. I wouldn't know where to start. I think college football, when I was uh, shaking everyone's hand in my office, congratulating myself on picking Northwestern plus, I guess, four or five, and they tried, and they tried. They kicked the ball to Northwestern with a couple of seconds ago. They being, I believe, Ohio State. Long story short, next thing I know, Ohio State scores a touchdown. That was a bad beat for me. <laughs> and there've been plenty more. I might add too. I, hey, Dan, when I win the, the <laughs> lucky ones, when I get a bad beat and win the lucky ones, I consider that being an expert. The others, uh, bad luck. Who would you bet on to win the MVP in the NFL? I know who you have as the favorite, Tom Brady. Who would you put money on? 
I would say either Aaron Rodgers would be a good choice at five to one. Green Bay is going to be very good this year. Maybe Derek Carr at seven to one. Wouldn't do Brady because I think it's asking too much for him to have another sensational year. Who are the surprise teams you have this year? Because usually you'll get a couple that go up and a couple that go down. Well, when you say surprise teams, Dan, to me, a surprise team is one that beats the spread. I'm not, I don't mean this to be sacrilegious, but I don't look for surprise teams in the NFL unless okay. they'll beat the spread. Okay. I see tremendous value in, in schlock teams like the Jets <laughs> and the 49ers and major schlock in Chicago, if you'll pardon my. I have to clean it up for your show. Uh, what about World oh, Series? Cleveland, that's going to be, excuse me, Cleveland's going to be another good one. They're horrible, but they'll be they'll beat the spread. Wait, so if, if I'm going to bet, let's say I was going to bet on the Jets and the Browns and the Niners this year against the spread. You think that's smart? Well, you have to pick your spot, Dan. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You can't just bet them every week. You have to take, like, let's say uh, Pittsburgh is going to play Cleveland. You want to catch Pittsburgh off of a big win, and then you take your spot. These schlock teams are very underrated. Bookmakers know that the public bets favorite. So what do you do? You you inflate the line. So you're getting tremendous value anytime you take the Jets, the 49ers, uh, Buffalo, Chicago, Jacksonville, and so on. We're talking to Danny Sheridan, a sports betting handicapper, analyst, uh, saw some of his betting tips in this month's edition of uh, Cigar Aficionado. How do you become an odds maker? That's a good question. I guess you have to have a good opinion. I really can't answer that, except I've been lucky for about 35 years. There's no school, Dan. I don't think you can go to school. But you said you bet on – I didn't realize that you wagered on football when we were at CNN. Yeah. I wish I had known that. I would encourage you to bet with me. No, I had a bad beat, and uh, I, I think it was the Orange Bowl, and uh, I, I lost half of the money that I had built up, and I, I just – Cashed out. That was it. I was done. I remember losing on a bet. Remember Chester Markle with the Packers had a had an extra. Right. He had a field goal blocked against, I think, the Bears, and he caught it and ran it in for a touchdown. If he makes the field goal, I win my bet. Chester Markle gets it blocked. He picks it up and he runs it in for a touchdown. Now, the, that, well, that, let me say that's that's definitely Hall of Fame bad beat. I have to put that one in there. I'd forgotten about that one. Well, I had a, my former bookmaker and out of Pittsburgh, Tony Luzak. <laughs> Tony uh, had a bad beat on uh, the Saints with uh, Dempsey's field goal against the Lions. He he lost a bet. Sixty three yards. Yes, Tom Dempsey. Yeah, yeah. So he. Uh, he, he, uh, he, I see that's that's more entertaining than guys telling me, hey, you know, I won on this bet. I want to know when you lose. That that's when you got better stories there. Not that anybody wants to tell them, but I I tell mine because I don't bet anymore. Oh, you're correct though. It's 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 the it's the well anyway. Betting. Let me say this: betting on pro football can be hazardous to one's wealth. I think that sums <laughs> it up. But do you bet a lot? Like, no, 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 Dan, I, that's the beauty of it. I do not bet. I have never – I don't bet on sports, and that's why I think I have a decent opinion. I think when you bet oh, on sports, okay. you say, like, Nick Saban, I don't like him. Look what he did. It doesn't bother me. If I, may, if I miss a game, it's Nick Saban. It's me. All right, we have a bet in studio here with the Danettes that I have uh, one guy, Fritzy, who says the Browns will win at least five games this year outright. Do you have any prediction I'll on that? I'll be most happy to book that. I'll be, excuse me, Dan. I'll be most happy to book that bet. And when I win, I'll give the proceeds to charity. We'll call five a tie. You're not going to win five games. It's possible, but it's not probable. <laughs> Fritzy, Fritzy should stick to what he does best, doing your show. Oh, that's what he does best? I think so. Oh. Well, I don't know him personally, but seems to do a pretty nice job. Fritzy, do you want to bet Danny Sheridan? Why not? What do you want to bet him? You're already betting a, uh, you know, a wheel of punishment with Seton here. I think it's great that he stepped up and he's willing to donate some money to uh, to charity if the Browns. Well, what about to you? I don't know. If you lose, would you donate money to a charity? I don't have that Danny Sheridan kind of cash. <laughs> that's, that's that's the only. You don't have to. You don't. Hey, let me just say this: load up the wagon, Fritzy. Don't worry about this mule, and I will take your bet. I'll give it to charity, and uh, you can keep it if you win. That's uh, extremely generous. All right, there you go. 
There you go. But I could. I, I'm glad to find a charity to uh, to donate to. There's uh, there's all kinds of wonderful yeah, right. charities. To, I, mean, yeah. I don't know if I can. Yeah. Do how about you? Hey, listen. Let me say this to you. Not to drop names, but I used to bet every year, and I say I used to bet. We do it for charity. Mike and Mike. They never beat me. I let them pick two Super Bowl teams. I laid them five and six to one. On they put up a hundred, I put up six hundred. Again, they never beat me. Now the question is, will Fritzy beat me? Wow. Would you if Might. I would you do this though if I said you could have two teams or the rest of the field for the Super Bowl? Which which would you take if I said pick a side? You talking to me, Dan? Yeah. Or you asking yeah. Fritzy? Oh no, I'm done with Fritzy. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Probably his family is too. <laughs> I would take obviously the chalk, New England, and uh, I'd take Green Bay if I had to pick two teams. And the odds are I'll be wrong on both of them. But I will let your staff. Pick any two teams they want, and I'll lay them six to one, money to go to charity. Okay. Who wants a piece of Danny Sheridan here? Seton? Geez, all of a sudden, are these the same guys <laughs> that are not shy that I hear every day? Yes, yes, yes. That they're, they're clammed up. Yeah, they are. How about this, Danny? Let me let them think about it. And then um, I they will collectively pick two teams that they think will be. Now, is this the win the Super Bowl? Yes, oh, you okay. got to win the Super Bowl, okay. not be in it. Correct. Okay, uh, and it's six. And I'll lay them say I'll lay them five to one. I, I got to protect myself, and we'll give the proceeds to charity. How's that? Okay, all right. So we'll uh, we'll take a break, and they get the bragging rights because Go Greeny and Goalie have never beaten me, so they get the bragging rights if they win. Well, now you're talking to real NFL people. That that's the difference here between Mike and Mike. That that's why they didn't last. They I, they couldn't handle the pressure of trying to stand up to you. <laughs> And they had to split them up, you know. Golick said, "I got to have an NFL guy." Brought in Trey Wingo to, you know, take a piece of you. I think that's that's how that happened. Uh, it's cigar aficionado, uh, Danny's tips, but also uh, DannySheridan dot com is his website. We we're going to come up with two teams here, Danny, and then we'll uh, we'll wager that bet with you. I look forward to hearing from Fritzy or you. And thank you, Dan, for having me on. Great to talk to you again, Danny. Thank you. That's uh, Danny Sheridan. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.